So, hyvää huomenta tai hyvää päivää kaikille kuuntelijoille ympäri maailmaa. Tervetuloa Finlandia Foundation Nationalin puolesta saunaviikko 2024 viimeiseen live-tapahtumaan. God morgon eller god dag till alla lyssnare runt om i världen. På uppdrag av Finlandia Foundation National, välkommen till Bastuveckan 2024, eller ska vi säga istället saunavecka. Detta är den sista live-sessionen i årets serie. Hello to everybody tuning in from around the world. On behalf of the Finlandia Foundation National, welcome to Sauna Week 2024. It's great to have you all here to talk about one of our favorite topics, sauna. And this is the last live event of our series this week. My name's Tommy Flanagan. I'm the executive director of Finlandia Foundation National, and we're thrilled to be offering programming all about sauna for the third year in a row. FFN has declared the last week of February National Sauna Week, and we think it's beginning to catch on because both the Michigan State Legislature and the City of San Diego have proclaimed National Sauna Week this year. So to introduce this session, I couldn't think of another a better person to bring this conversation to light than Carrie Van Carrie Vanderveen, who is the director and curator of Finlandia Art Gallery in the Finnish American Heritage Center in Hancock, Michigan. Help me welcome Carrie, and I will let you take it from here. Thank you all. all right. for Thank, Thank you, Tommy. You. Well, I'm thrilled to be here with Eric, uh, our Finlandia Foundation Artist of the Year, and I'm looking forward to doing some more collaborations with Eric in the near future, so look out for that. Um, I met Eric about 20 years ago. He was actually the first solo Finnish American artist that I brought to Finlandia Gallery. So we go back a long way. He also um, participated in the Contemporary Finnish American Artist Series that we ran for many, many years. And so he, he was a featured artist and then participated in the 20th anniversary exhibit. So that was a wonderful connection that we have. I'm also going to introduce Anne Juntala. Anne is a part of the Finlandia Foundation's Young Leaders Board, and we're lucky to have young people involved in preserving and celebrating Finnish and Finnish American culture. And so Anne is going to introduce Eric. We will have a slideshow of Eric's work, and then we'll have some time for questions and answers. Hi, I'm Anne. Um, I'm really excited to introduce Eric. He, as someone mentioned before, is FFN's inaugural Artist of the Year and has been called one of the leading painters of landscape and the environment of his generation. So we are very excited to have Eric share some of his work and influences with us today. If you have any questions, feel free to put those in the chat and I'm going to turn it over to Eric. Oh, um... Thank you, Anne. Thank you, Carrie. Um, and thanks, Tommy, too, for uh, all the warm introductions. Um, I am very excited to be here and uh, to talk about, well, I have many favorite things, but two of my most favorite things, sauna and painting. Before I really get into these, um, here's a little background. <clears throat> my father was born in sauna. He was born in a sauna in a Finnish community in Sugar Creek, Ohio, in 1920. Um, his birth certificate says born at home. We all mean we all know that to mean born in sauna. Um, and shortly thereafter, they moved to the Finnish community of uh, Fitchburg and West Towns in Massachusetts. And during his youth, sauna was an important part of his life and that of his family and of his friends. Um, when he was a, a young man, um, he was regular at the Elm Street bath, the chair house bath, uh, steam bath, and a number of others, including uh, private saunas of, of, of friends nearby. When we were children growing up in rural New Hampshire, we did not have sauna at home. My father was very sad about this. Somehow he couldn't quite get around to building one for us, but he did take us back in time in a way to these saunas in central Massachusetts. So as a child, I visited places much like this uh, from the mid 20th century. Um, and then after many years of visiting Finland, uh, studying there, traveling, painting, and, and becoming uh, sort, of, sort of almost pathologically obsessed 
with um, with that culture, I decided to reclaim my birthright and build my own. And the problem is I didn't have a place to build it, but a friend offered a pond on his farm, his apple orchard, and um, he said it was a beautiful setting in need of a uh, a beautiful building. And we entered into a 99-year gentleman's agreement for the use of this um, for the use of this land on a handshake. And so, it, around 1999, I started the construction of this sauna with using 100 exactly 100 Vermont spruce logs. Um, I just took a guess and ordered that many, and we used. Um, every last one down to the bench. Uh, you'll notice here that the roof looks a little bit newer than the side of the building. And that's because um, a handful of years, it, it burned off. And as an old Finnish friend of mine once said, a good sauna burns down from time to time, right? Um, uh, the, the, the first, the first uh, I have to tell you a little bit about constructing this. And I sadly, I don't have the construction photos. But the first thing you do when planning a sauna is to acquire the kiosk, the stove, because the stove determines how big the sauna will be. And uh, this is a this is a nipa from uh, from Michigan. It arrived. Um, uh, it's very heavy. It's uh, welded by hand, and it's uh, it's seen many, many, many hours. Um, and that pipe rusted back there uh, glows red hot when it's uh, when it's in full full fire and reaches, it takes about three hours to heat up the building. Um, it's a 19, it's, it's a, the design is after a 19th century smoke sauna from my grandfather's birthplace of Susma. It's, um, you know, my, my friends who are involved closely with sauna Siora in Helsinki call it uh, museum quality, right? And it's Lolu is soft. We're, we're all connoisseurs of the Lolu. It's Lolu is soft and it's very hot. So, um, and here, my son Emmett Oxley uh, learning to light the fire a few years ago. Um, my family's grown up here. Um, the chill, so, you know, I have to, I prepare it. It's part of, it's part of my, one of my great pleasures in life to prepare sauna. The children played, um, our friends visit. Um, and of course, sauna is used at all times of the year. Um, in the summer in Vermont, however, um, it gets dark, right? So this is an unusual element of uh, of of Finnish sauna, Finnish American sauna culture. The Finns don't get to experience because they have twenty four hours of mostly of sunlight in the in the summertime. Um, and my wife Rachel. Um, helping out she loves it as well and there's Emmett when he's very little um the wood you know I um I might be the only one in southern Vermont who orders truckloads of ex exclusively birch wood um it's it's kind of a throwaway wood if you're heating your home no one really likes to use birch but I like it because it splits cleanly and it's uh it burns hot and fast um here's Madeline Luli uh with her, uh, uh, you know, she's the uh, Lolu Mestari. Um, here's Emmett, it, you know, Finnish, it, uh, sorry, uh, sauna is sort of, the, they're built in wonderful rites of passage in sauna. And this is Emmett's first day on the on the top bench, right? And um, he didn't stay for very long, <laughs> but he, um, he was very, very proud, as you can see. Um, and, you know, it's a sauna is about um family culture for us it's family ritual it we we uh we use it on sunday primarily uh in place of going to church uh, much to my mother's chagrin but uh it's it's it has it has a, an outsized role in our lives and <clears throat> um and i was thrilled to accept this invitation to, to speak about sauna and my experience with it. Um, and the title um, amused me, right? The, the title of this talk is Art in Sauna. Um, and I have never been able to make any art in sauna other than, um, you know, tossing the lulu to the, you know, learning a, you know, to, to, to create a really nice arc of 
water hitting the steam from the top bench. I mean, there's an art to that. Um, Aksali Kalankalela, one of my uh, absolute favorite painters and, and a painter whose work, um, among others, has really seeped into my own and informed my own, um, has a painting here called In the Sauna. Um, he likely painted it in the studio uh, following, um, you know, with models set up, but it, it really does invoke the feeling of that, um, that family culture across generations in sauna, which is very dear to my heart. Um, and here's a funny one, which isn't widely known. And this is, this is just in the inverse called outside the sauna. And here's, here are a group of men, uh, maybe family members, maybe friends, uh, sort of enjoying a moment. Uh, that moment at, uh, of cooling down where you feel for a moment like you've you've conquered nature. For you can stand in in frigid temperatures and you're and you feel just naked, of course, and just co just comfortable in the elements. And that you and then of course, um, as I learned, you're supposed you, a, a real f a sauna aficionado would never use a towel. You just stay outside long enough until you dry off. And then you go back in, right? Um, sometimes a towel is necessary, but um, <clears throat> so when I built the sauna and started using it, and over time incorporated it, incorporated it into my family life and culture. Like I said, we were doing this on Sundays. This was also a break for me from my work, which uh, in the studio as a painter, I I just, I said, I'm not taking my work with me to sauna. Um, sauna is going to be a place for sort of rejuvenation, for contemplation, for, for relaxation. And um, I didn't make art about it right away. But what I did do was I started to reflect on, uh, quite literally, the, uh, what it means, right? And one of the things it means is that it, it, for me, it's a connection to history, connection to my Finnish history and ancestry, as I mentioned at the beginning, but it's also a connection to um, another element of history, um, one that my also my father and Finnish Americans were involved with, um, and that's ice harvesting in the winter. Um, Finns, very enterprising, Akera Finns, who are, Akera means to be busy and occupied in, in positive ways. Um, in the winter, they didn't have much to do, so the, they um, they they happily joined in um, to ice harvesting operations for fellow farmers and sometimes to make some money. And my father, um, as a seven or eight year old boy, started attending these winter ice harvesting um, I don't know uh, events, and um, this isn't something that he worked on. But um, this is much like the lake in Brookline, New Hampshire, Lake Potama Potanapo, where he and his brother and other Finnish relatives and friends and farmers would have um, extracted the ice for their own personal use and sometimes for sale. And, and the operation looked much like this. So when I cut the ice to make that plunge hole in front of it, I'm, I'm, I'm making the, the the plunge hole for the sauna, but I'm also connecting through history to something else. And the tools I'm using here, this uh, six foot ice saw and the pike you see there lying in the front, these are the very tools of that industry. Um, the saw is is crafted in 1900, right? I have the I have the date of manufacture of it. Um, I found it as a as a surplus element. It was made in 1900 and it had never been used. Um, and to this, because I use it only for cutting the ice, I've never had to sharpen it. And it's as sharp as the day it was it was uh, formed. Um, and that's, that's a pretty special thing. So, um, you know, and it's a good bit of work and a good bit of exercise um, that everyone in the family joins in with um, as we, as we all learn to prepare sauna together and learn to appreciate it together. And of course, to um, and of course, to create the hole, um, the ice has to be extracted. It has to be removed. And I'll and I'll talk about that 
the meaning of that, of taking something away um, again in a minute when I, I get further along. Um, and so after all this work, and it takes several hours to make sauna ready, like I said, it takes three hours to heat it. And during that time, it takes it, you know, there's wood to chop, there's the ice to cut. Um, that's, for that reason, spring and summer really feel like a bit of a vacation because I don't have to cut the ice, but I also miss the swimming in the ice. Um, and right. And so, you know, here's the obligatory picture of the, uh, of the, of the plunge in the avanto, right? Um, but it, and it may be due to these repeated plunges that I started to see the hole in the ice differently. Right? I started to see it kind of as, as a as a brand new thing, as something separate from um, from its its intended purpose. I saw the history of it through Finnish culture. I I saw the history of of it through the ice harvesting industry, um, and then I just saw it as for what it was a hole in the ice, or even more strangely, a hole in a lake. Right, like I'm cutting away a hole in a veneer. The ice is a veneer. It's fra ice is fragile, as we've all learned. Right, ice, ice. Uh, you know, without ice, we don't have life on this earth. Right. So the ice on this pond is symbolic of that. And when you take away a veneer, you reveal something. Right. What it is, you what it is that is revealed isn't immediately clear, and that's. The sort of investigation of painting that I'm involved in is sort of what is this all about, really? Um, the very first this this on the screen here is the very first painting made um, there in 2007 of the Avanto of the hole in the ice, and here it's set in um, it's set in the frame in the landscape, right? It is a part of the landscape. Um, it's also a part of art history, which I immediately connected with it. Uh, when I when I put the hole in the very foreground like this, I rooted it there. I was thinking of this wonderful uh, Gustave Courbet painting, Burial at Ornan, where the grave, um, all these, these uh, people in attendance here, the grave is at the foot of the painting, as if you're standing in it yourself. Um, I didn't want my paintings to be quite so um so dark i'm meaning so uh, foreboding i wanted them to, to to be a little bit more optimistic um, and i don't think that the darkness is um um uh, it's ultimately a negative thing i think darkness and and the brightness are uh, they live equally in our lives in our minds in our imaginations and certainly uh in nature so um then this is this is the second painting of this series, and I immediately wanted to, it to be different, right? So I I removed the landscape, I tipped the shape up, and I created something. I painted it more realistically. If you look at the ice back there, it's it's um, I mean it's as close in observation as I can get to the qualities of ice, but I created also an unwitting abstraction by tipping it up. I was very, very excited by this. There was a kind of sort of aha moment, or as some of my friends say, an aho moment. But, you know, that's, uh, you know, they, they all like to have a bit of fun with me. But it also related to, um, it also rooted me in art history in a family tree of painters that really excited me. Um, I, I felt like, oh, now I have something in common with uh, Malevich, this uh, the Ukrainian-born painter who's famous in many ways. He's he's attributed uh, to the 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 creation of abstraction, right? He's he, he made like the first non-objective painting. He just made a black square. It's beautifully painted. It has a rich surface um, if you've ever seen it in person, but it's just a black square. But yet it's not. It's about many, many, many things. Um, and just like the hole in the ice, as the more that I paint it, and I'm coming on to, I don't know, 
um, 15 years or so of, 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 of studying this shape, it, it means more and more each time. Um, it relates to a painting, a very a painting I was surprised to see here by Agnes Martin, the uh, the minimalist American abstract painter. Um, Agnes Martin, by the way, grew up on a farm in Saskatchewan. She was born in 1912. And I was thinking, like, only on a farm would would she see an image like this, right? Not that this needs to have any explanation, but I think that she saw a nice harvesting operation herself on her on the farm uh, uh, where she grew up. Um, and then, you know, I want to talk about tools again for a minute, right? The saw, the saw, the, so the the word saw is also, if you if you bear with me here, um, and because when you're out in the cold and, and you 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 have a you develop an extreme focus, um, words start to take on different meaning, different meanings and multiple meanings. The word saw is also the past tense of to see, right? And one draws a saw, right? This is you you draw it through the ice as one would draw with a pencil. Um, and the lie, and you know, so I I think of these paintings that emerge from this process as starting here. So the my first work is a drawing. Um, and then surprising things happen, right? Think things that I see that um that surprise me. Something like this has me thinking about Ellsworth Kelly, the uh, the American minimalist. Um, um, whose whose sh shapes abstract shapes all were derived from observation um i have to live in two worlds somehow i sometimes i i try to attribute sometimes i attribute this to my finnish american nature living kind of cross culturally in a way um so there my paintings are both representational and abstract i like they satisfy me when they live in both both worlds. Either when one is when one is heavier than the other, I start to feel dissatisfied. Um, uh, here's Andrew Wyeth, um, who often paints the remnants of things, right? And I, I this is one of my favorite uh, paintings um, of his called Downhill. It's a it's just it's it's a snow pile left over in the springtime, and here's the uh, you know, in the in the burnt grasses all around it, um, it reminds me of sort of as a counterpoint to my to my ice cuts. Um, now, this is the, when I painted that first ice painting in nineteen in in two thousand seven. It wasn't the first time I had painted a hole in the ice. Um, that was in Finland on my Fulbright Fellowship in nineteen ninety one and ninety two. Um, when I had the chance to spend a good amount of time with Finnish farmers, ice fishermen, um, lots of and people who just spend their lives um, or as much of it as possible outdoors, um, I was painting, I was making plein air paintings directly from observation. So my setup, my painting setup, looked much like their fishing setup. Um, and of course, as one of them said, you know, we don't come here to fish, right? Um, and so my sauna here at the edge of a pond, uh, is, it's, it's a fascinating place because it's a place of all weathers, all dimensions. It can, it can feel very small and very intimate and very closed in, or it can feel as expansive as the fields in Ostrobothnia, uh, near Olu, where I like to spend a lot of time. Um, the hills in the distance there, um, uh, are the Green Mountains in Vermont. Um, and then, you know, as this project progressed, I realized the the hole doesn't always need to be black or dark. Um, actually, the holes aren't black with black pigment. They're chromatic black. So I mix all sorts of different dark pigments together to come up with, with those darkened tones. But, you know, the the, the water in that Avanto and the ice cut reflects the world around it. Um, it sometimes reflects the cloud cover, um, and sometimes it reflects um, a sunlit sky. 
And in this case, it reflects a memory. So it reflects the memory of the yolky yellow of an Arctic sky that I've observed a number of times on my peripatetic uh, journey through um, Arctic Norway and Finland. Um, and, you know, each time, like I said, each time I return to the edge of this hole in the ice, I see it differently. I start to look at it more closely uh, and I see all the nuance in, in the, the, the refraction of light and the, the kind of almost ecstatic or hallucinatory colors and combinations that, that are created there. Um, and in one of the most sort of wonderful exchanges of my looking closely at something is the occasion to share this work and enjoy, enjoy watching and experiencing other people looking closely at it. And so for the past few years, um, I've had the incredible good fortune. Um, and I suppose this is what happens when the message starts to get out there in the world um, that um, museums and curators and um, and people who are whose life mission it is to sh is to share art have been including my work in their presentations. Um, that was the that was the initial presentation at at uh, the Hood Museum of Art at Dartmouth. Um, this is a painting on view at the moment, uh, presently at the uh, the newly uh, reopened Buffalo AKG Museum, uh, which is directed by the remarkable Finn Yane Galengalela Siren. Uh, he's the grandson of Akseli Galengalela. Um, and, and he and I have developed um, a very cordial correspondence um, over the years. And he's, uh, I think he sees, uh, or he said to me in his <clears throat> many words, a relationship between his great, his grandfather's work and, you know, a contemporary look at the landscape, a contemporary vision of the landscape. So that, uh, that's an incredible, um, um, I don't know, stamp of approval, I guess. Um, it, it's um, it's validating and it and it feels good to have to have a, a body of work that I started on a whim because it was something it was something that interested me to the core, right? It was deeply personal. And I knew that. I also felt strange about breaking my rule of sun, Sunday sauna, that it would be that that my art would become complicated with that, right? And, and indeed, it has. Um, although I try to keep sauna just on Sunday, and I might go up at another time during the week to make the paintings. Um, but perhaps it's also inevitable, you know, that the painting is a reflection of the totality of my life. And I often think that painters, uh, when you look at a painter, whether it's Berta Morisot or or Claude Monet, or uh, you know, you name your favorite painter, that they they lived the way they painted, right? I think I don't think the artists can separate their their life from their work, um, so it's inevitable, perhaps. Um, and this is the most recent acquisition, which I'm just um, I'm overjoyed by, and I'm in incredibly proud of. Uh, this is uh, an inclusion uh, at the Farnsworth Art Museum um, here opposite the great Kathy Bradford. Um, and uh, I like to think that the pinks and violets in her painting are refracted in the edges of my own. Um, if this is a, this is a remarkable um, installation here um, of this painting. Uh, which um, which is a hole cut in the ice on the Kennebec River in Maine, which sadly this year did not freeze over. So again, you know, the ice reminds us to think about larger issues. Um, it's the first time, first time in memory, living memory that the river hasn't frozen over. Um, and that's that's really something we should uh, we should take a moment to think about. And, 
with that, it brings me right back to the beginning. And um, I'm happy, happy to take any questions or um, I can, I can go on too, if you like, but i um, really happy to answer your questions. Eric, we had a question in the chat that was, did you, well, it's, it has two questions in it, so I'll ask you the first one. Did you get to cut and enjoy Avanto already during your Fulbright year? Uh, I, yes, yes. Um, although we didn't cut it so much as we we chipped it out. And that was really my first experience with uh, with Avanto is to, was, was, was there. In Finland, in nineteen, that was in nineteen ninety one. The second I, part of the question is, Harry, you can go ahead. No, no, you go ahead. Okay, is your ice cutting technique more informed by Finland or New England? Oh, uh, this is. I don't think the Finns are doing it exactly this way. I um, a couple of my friends have a chainsaw that is lubricated with 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 water um and they use that uh, others are just ch chipping holes in the ice and, and you can do that it's just it's it's a lot of work and the edges are a lot sharper <laughs> so um but this this is very quick actually um i mean i mean if the ice is over 14 inches or so then it becomes really um it's arduous, but um, but otherwise, to set the holes in the corners and then draw the line and then either extract the ice or sometimes push it under, it's uh, it doesn't take that long, um, and it it is something I really look forward to. It would be curious to know how many people still cut ice holes with hand tools like you do. We've we've moved so into power tools and everything we do from building to um, right everything but um it's so it's it's such a different more process oriented um well, experience when you're using there, handles. you're right i mean there is a reason we've moved to power tools it's uh mm -hmm. it, it's it's efficient um and you know there's a you know i'm using them perhaps in a in a nostalgic way um i i i don't want my paintings to have a whiff of nostalgia in them i don't think that's uh i don't think that's a I don't think that's uh, the role of the painting, but in the making of this, I get to enjoy in, enjoy that. Um, and I do know of some various groups of ice cutting aficionados who who use the 19th century methods to cut the ice. It's just that they don't also swim in the hole when they're when they're done with it, or maybe they do if they're part of the the polar bear club. But um, the sauna, the sauna avanto contrast uh, i wish i had mentioned it earlier is really inherent to the culture of sauna the meaning of sauna and also the paintings i'm trying to uh, to the message i'm trying to convey in the paintings life is in the contrasts <laughs> another question we had in the chat was what is the city or lake where the ice cut was located uh this ice cut I'm assuming the ice cut of the paintings. Um, it, it's in an undisclosed location in Walpole, New Hampshire. <laughs> On a, it's a pond. It does the pond uh, doesn't have a name. A lot of people are making comments about your lovely art exhibits that you've had and how impactful they were. And and um, oh, thank you. Um, yeah, and someone said that they they were recently at an exhibit and saw an Agnes Martin painting and immediately thought of you. So that's that's a true. Well, that's comment. that that warms my heart. I immediately think of her, and <laughs> you know, artists borrow from each other, and um, part of the borrowing is is you know is um, you know uh, uh, noting your sources, right, and uh, and and owning it and share and and sharing that. So, you know, uh, it's it's important to me to uh, to make all of those connections, and it really feels great when someone makes it in the the other way around. Absolutely. Um, one person asked if you could talk about the scale relationship of the whole and the scale of the paintings. Oh, right. Thanks for for that. It's it's very important. Um, 
mostly, not 100% of the time, and certainly not with the small paintings, but when, when the paintings are five, six, or eight feet large, or nine feet, the hole is typically to scale. So th the hole you're seeing in front of you, in front of the building here, is um, probably four feet, three feet by four feet, four feet by four feet. Um, and that is translated to the painting in close to one to one. So, you know, it's an, it's a, I'm tra trying to transfer the experiences, right? The small paintings, I can't, I don't do that, obviously, but. One person mentioned that doing this by hand, somehow you've gotten such a fine line and so such a straight fine line and doing that with a hand tool rather than a chainsaw. They were wondering, you know, how, how you got those precise lines. So um, the saw, well, in the, in the heyday of the art, har the, the, uh, the art, the ice harvesting industry, the, um, the, the lines for the blocks of ice would be scored. Right. So the cutter, the, the ice saw would follow along that scored mark. I don't score the I don't score this other than I set the corners. So I I, I set one corner it just so I can start it. Right. And then the line I just cut from one corner to the next. And the saw um, is re remarkably uh, straight and true. So it it's uh, it's it's nice and straight. Um, yeah. A chainsaw, I think, could could kind of uh it would be hard to handle i was curious that i i'm very attracted to that line that you walk between abstraction and and representation and um i find those abstract towards the abstract really lovely and and also kind of bring a broader meaning like more interpretation maybe and i was wondering if you could talk about that in your art like what is that line for you and and what does bringing in more abstraction mean in terms of the meaning of the work mm. well i don't the, yeah that's a good question i i think first of all i think that i think the exchange between realism and abstraction or or clarity and sort of in obfuscation or sharpness and softness, all these contrasts, um, I think has more to do first with the way we see things, right? Um, I, for one, um, you know, if I'm looking at the glass on my table here, I don't see it in its entirety. I see a sharp edge maybe around the rim and then the rest of it kind of goes off into, um, in, into something more diffuse, right? So if I were painting that, I mean, you can you can choose to paint it in many many different ways, but um, I I want a painting that reflects sort of how I see the world around me, um, and I also try to paint it with as much sensitivity as I can bring to bear, right? Um, and meaning, then I think I think that I think that comes a little bit later. Right. And I think that comes a little bit later through the, you know, kind of the it's like a it's like the, the chat afterwards with, over coffee, you know, like, oh, you know, it, it's it's you're kind of recounting what's happened and you go, oh, that feels like this or this reminds me of this or and then the more that you do something, the the more that feeling, that meaning, that purpose can be built into it. Right. So, you know, you know, if I want, you know, if I'm thinking of this as a veneer, as if I think of this ice as a veneer, which I think is a it, it is one of the important meanings of this, of these paintings, is to show that there's something, you know, or, or to show that there's sort of wonder and mystery under this surface. Some people think of it as like, oh, this is scary. Right. And then others think of it as full of mystery and wonder and, and, and wonderfulness. And that's uh, that's sort of how I see it. Um, so um, so the meaning is, you know, it's like, well, what's this veneer about? Right. Um, 
Um, it's not an is statement. It's more of a question. Yeah, I kind of wonder if your viewers, when you when you have an exhibit, say, of all these ice cuts, there may be people who are familiar with what this is, and and many probably are not familiar with um, with the sauna and the ice cut and the plunge hole. Do, do you I, get a lot of curiosity when you're um, interacting with your audience? I do, and I think because um, sort of my interests in this sort of cross lots of different subjects. Um, I think the audience also cross-references in that way, too. Um, and, you know, many people are a little bit aware of Finnish culture. They're a little bit aware of sauna. They've heard of sauna. Um, they're curious to know the difference between sauna and sauna. And I have a definition to share if you like. But it's a, um, you know, it's a, it's a, you know, it's a it's a part of culture, right? It's a part of of a culture um, that I carry with me. Um, I'm Finnish American. Um, I'm part of uh, you know the, the uh, you know I'm 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 the sort of a a fourth generation last thread on the you know on the tapestry, right? Uh, my children aren't as committed to Finnish American culture as I am, and I you know I think. Yes. Yeah, well, not yet. I mean, they, things come around, um, and they're teenagers. So, but um, and I don't, I don't know where I was really at sixteen either. But um, um, yeah, I forget where I was going. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. I was just thinking you right. your kids in this sauna culture. It's so deeply embedded in them. I'm, I'm sure yeah. it has very strong. Oh. Uh, I think they just think of it as, uh, uh, you know, it's just the thing we do. Um, and, and, you know, I felt that way about the, the, the Finnish culture in my own home. It was just the thing we did. And then as an adult, uh, when I took a teaching job here in Southern Vermont with people who had been to Finland and, you know, especially the Nordic skiers. And um, there was a, we're also, um, there's also a historian at the school I taught at, who was very much um, aware of the Winter War and all things Finnish, and all of a sudden it became like a badge of honor to be Finnish, you know, and um, um, and and that was validating, and it also, you know, just opened my eyes um, to to the, you know, what was also what, what was very normal for me in terms of family culture then became something like interesting to the outside world it didn't it didn't quite compute right away um, those so small, every, small pockets everyone wants to know your definitions oh of sauna and sauna all right well you know so if you're if you're um if you have a gym membership and you like to go to the to that hot room uh afterwards you you should be um, you should just do so and enjoy it um, because that sauna is part of that, you know, part of that country club or health club experience. Um, if you're going to visit a Finnish person's home, um, you might want to bring your overnight toilet kit and shower, you know, and, uh, and, and uh, a change of clothes because you'll be invited to have a bath before you're invited to dinner. And, you know, so sauna is, um, it, it's, it's a very broad experience, but it's, it's uh, in its essence, it's a bath. Um, it's not just a place to sweat and get healthy, although, um, or feel, you know, feel rejuvenated, although that's part of the experience. It's, uh, it's just, it's, a uh, um, and, and sauna is the only Finnish word in regular usage in English. And um, as far as I know, it's retained its uh, original pronunciation. Um, so um, we had another question. Um, does your output change the either the themes, color or subjects or rate of production after a visit to Finland? Oh, yeah, I think so. I think I, I get a little bit more uh, I don't know, phenocentric and, and, you know, I might, 
paint more spruce trees or something or something. Um, no, for sure, because I um, I carry I you know I carry these images around in my head, and um, you know if if I was going to Finland for a few, weeks, I remember this experience of you know a six week painting trip in northern Finland. The first week or so, I was making paintings that looked just like Vermont, and I couldn't understand it until I realized that there was kind of a jet lag. Um, a jet lag of consciousness, if you will. That's Barbara Kingsolver wrote that. Um, that you know, it takes a while for your eye to catch up and your mind to catch up. So, so yeah, after a visit to Finland, in a period of time, inevitably, I'll um, the paintings will be a little bit starker, a little bit cooler, um, and a little more reserved, which is a good thing for painting. Um, to make, to, you know, the, the the Finns are make very careful choices about what they say, what they put in their homes, what they, um, you know, and how they conduct themselves, right? It's, it's part of the culture. Um, and it's, uh, you know, making those choices too, it's, it's, uh, it's necessary to painting, you know, because what you, what you see, what you choose to leave out is says as much as what you put in. Um. People enjoyed your your um, definitions. There's a little lag in, in um, this, yeah. but one person talked about how um, sauna gets associated with hospitality and generosity and yes. invitation, and okay. I think that I think that uh, is really evident. Um, do you invite people to your sauna often, or is that a part of your um, family's experience? When it was when I. When it was first built, there was a lot of curiosity and um, and friends would ask to join and they were invited. And then if, and then that kind of winnowed, right? It was a little bit like some people realize, oh, this isn't for us or it was a great experience. But, you know, um, I mean, I didn't don't intend it to be like a, a, you know, it's not a village sauna, right? So I'm not, you know, this isn't going to happen every weekend, but it's a pretty self-selecting group of people who who want to come again and again right and um um you know i'm just and i'm i am happy i feel a little bit like um you know an ambassador for sauna culture like you know it's my job in a way my role to 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 share the differences between say that sauna that, you know, that you might have in, you know, that you can build from a kit, um, which is wonderful. Right. And you should, you, and you, you, sh you should build it and you should have that, but you can also turn that sauna into sauna by, um, by reading a little bit about it and by, by um, turning it into, you know, that kind of uh, uh, nourishing soul cleansing bath. Right. Um, and inviting friends and and really understanding the ritual of sort of the exchange from heat to cold and or inside to outside um, and and the hospitality factor too I think that's a wonderful um, aspect that, that you're one of the questioners has commented on um the fin the, the fins are incredibly it's hospitable when it comes comes to sauna for sure we we have a lot of saunas in the copper country here in fact um almost every home has one we have one in our in right. our downstairs and then um we built a sauna on the lake on lake superior at a camp that we built and they're very very different experiences um well yeah. first of all we do go roll in the snow from mm -hmm. the one in our basement um but there's no water to plunge into um right. Lake Superior, but we have a tradition every New Year's Eve of having a party and we we have a sauna that night and start the new year that way. So that is a wonderful tradition. And and you know, you don't, I mean, I'm incredibly lucky to have a friend who's extended this generous gentleman's agreement for this this piece of land. Um, but you don't need to have a pond. Um, and in fact, sauna can even be built. Sauna can almost be built anywhere, um, you know, in a closet. It can be built in a car. I mean, there. I think. I think you'll have a session with um, portables about portable saunas, which are 
um, fabulous. Um, it's, uh, it, it is really something that if you want it, you can make it happen. <laughs> and, and the budgets can vary too. I mean, you can really do it on a shoestring or um, you, you can hire an architect to build one if you want. So, um, Someone asked, um, we're getting close to the end here. Um, people are asking if there are books available about your art and how they might get a hold of that. Oh, there are. Um, you can go to uh, the DC Moore Gallery website. Uh, DC Moore Gallery is my uh, is where I show my work in in New York. Uh, I have a show coming up in October, and uh, and also in the pipeline is a is a much larger, more comprehensive book by Rizzoli that'll come out in 2025. It seems like ages from now, but that's in the that's that's in the works. So, and many of these paintings will be included. Yeah, that that will come up quicker than than we know, and uh, that, I really look forward to that. We're so uh, really in love with your work, and we so appreciate you being here and telling us about your traditions and your inspirations, your family. Um, it's been a wonderful, wonderful hour. So, well, it's, it's, uh, the pleasure I feel is mine. Uh, this is a it, it's uh, it's a wonderful experience to share this with everyone, and thank I just thank you everyone for tuning in and you know you can drop me a line or if you want to know about uh, upcoming exhibitions uh, you can either go to the dc moore gallery or you can drop me a line too yeah and we will as i said we we will at finlandia uh, gallery have some upcoming um exhibit of eric's work in the future so so look forward keep, to that keep uh, keep looking on instagram and facebook and and look for that. Yes, I just want to say also from Finlandia Foundation, kiitos paljon, Eric. This was a fantastic discussion. And I just think, um, you know, I, a lot of people in the audience now uh, have been to all of or most of the events this week online. Mm. And I think that this just adds such a, this rounds it out so nicely to, to actually, what we actually did is focus on yes, the sauna and your history with it, and then your art actually taking us outside of the sauna to the Avanto, which is, of course, a major part of, and the increased interest in that, right? The polar plunges and polar plunges, you know, right. that. So I think it's super relevant to everything that I, I love the connections you make to the tradition and your heritage. But like you said, it doesn't have like a the 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 tinge of nostalgia and you don't look at things and think it's nostalgic necessarily but that is certainly like a part of it i just uh, look forward to your symposium on april 29th where we get to hear more from you yeah oh i look forward to it too and um you know a, a, a brief mention of sauna there as well but um a certainly. larger a larger conversation for sure certainly fantastic well thank you so much eric and carrie and Anne for uh, moderating this discussion. And with that, enjoy enjoying our, our Sauna Week theme song and have a great weekend. Kitos. Kitos, hey. Make friends in Finland You gotta put on your birthday suit And let your hair down Cause we don't play around We've been chilling in the heat Listening to the sound of the kiwas So throw in some löylyä lisää Tervetuloa saunaan sisään Get your butt on the sea Keep your distance Please let me show you How my Finnish heart rings This is my nature Just hear the kiwas sing in the sun, there's no ego, we're all the same If it feels too hot for you, don't be afraid So join me, drop your clothes and grab the Basics. Let's face it, it sounds kind of crazy. Kiwas, we throw water on the rocks. 
it can be electric or heated with some logs. Load. That's the steam coming up. That's the spirit of sauna. Did you mean sauna? Yeah, well, call it what you want. Bustu, Banya, Hammam, Korean Spa. Please let me show you how my Finnish heart rings. This is my nature. Just hear the kiwa sing. In the sound of there's no ego, we're all the same. If it gets too hot for you, don't be afraid. So join me, drop your clothes and grab the little koha in a sabu sauna Find your peace, find your rauha in the sauna. In the heat and you're sitting next to me We gonna keep it real, say it like it is Things take a sauna almost every day There are no rules, just do your way Please let me show you how my Finnish heart rings This is my nature, just hear the kiwa sing In the sound of there's no ego, we're all the same If it gets too hot for you, don't be afraid In the sauna In the sauna In the sauna In the sauna Don't 